We're live. And no, I'm not sitting on the pillows because I have hemorrhoids. I'm sitting on it because <laughs> because it we like need press. to be at equal level here for this conversation. I'm way above you. <laughs> That's what you'd like to think. So, Jeff, like, pedestal. Exactly, exactly. But welcome to the Chris Gethin podcast. Um, I'll introduce myself. I'm the special guest today. Oh, are you? Am I? You're special. <laughs> But I'm not a guest. I forced myself into this photo. No, we're here. Uh, we're here to just say hello. And I thought I wanted to sit Chris down again and ask him some questions about how his life has been. Give us a bit of a status update. Um, since? Uh, well, since the last one. Oh, man. I can't even remember that. <laughs> I don't remember my childhood. I can't remember last year. Um, what has happened since then? Well, we just... Well, just to say, what has happened so far this year, 2023? This so to year. put it in perspective, okay. we're in 2023, June. What has happened so far? Well, pretty much started the year in India. Okay. You know, training Riddick again. How long was I there for? Eight weeks. Yeah. Eight weeks. Did we go to Bataan this year or last year? Last year. Oh, last year. Okay. So eight weeks and then came back here to London. So yeah. we're in London right now because you don't recognize the background over here. And uh, met my parents, then went back to the U.S. and then immediately started filming uh, what is soon going to be the legacy video trainer over a twelve-week period. Uh, you dieted down as well. You competed in your first show. I guest posed at uh, the bodybuilding show. Really enjoyed that experience. That was the easiest diet and transformation I've ever been on, and it was very entertaining to actually see you and Neil go at each other. And I was like, God, it reminds me of my childhood, going at it, and my sister going at me. When we were younger, because I was like, we were we were very confrontational and very stubborn, and I was watching that in you and Neil. So Neil Hill was coaching both myself and Sunshine here, but whatever he was telling me, I was pretty much following. Uh, whatever he was telling her to follow, she would have her own version of that, and uh, she wouldn't hide it, <laughs> which, is, which was the funny part. I would have bloody hidden it, but she didn't hide it. Like the one day he came back, but well, he stayed with us on a couple of occasions. And she's having her meal, and Sunshine's got Quest chips on there as well. Healthy. Yeah, and she, he's like, and she didn't even hide it. He's like, what the fuck is that? What is that? Quest chips. That's not on your diet, but it's protein. I don't care, it's not on your diet. So it just, that was one thing. It was just very entertaining. It was good, but enjoyed the experience, and obviously having the accountability of both of us doing it together. Yeah. It was fun. Then we guest posed, and then straight after the guest pose, we went into like four back-to-back -back photo shoots. At the end, when they're like, do this pose, I'm like, I'm done with this. I don't want any more shoots, but I'm glad that we got the pictures done because yeah. we got some good shots done. And I'm uh, really, really happy with how that video trainer came out because in the beginning, I had a lot of doubt because I hadn't got in shape for a long time. Didn't know if it'd be difficult, hard. I didn't know if, I was, if I'd be able to put on the muscle required in a short amount of time as well to have some definition. Uh, body responded very, very well. I was quite surprised. And because I'd had so many injuries, uh, over the course of the last few years, specifically the severity of those injuries, I didn't know how, if I'd be able to train how I wanted, and I wasn't able to train exactly how I wanted, but the body responded well by navigating through those things. And then after the photo shoots, we came straight here to the UK for the Health Optimization Summit, which was extremely overwhelming, but it was great to see some of the new technology. One of those pieces we tried yesterday, mm. which was the human recharger. So... You know, we can talk a little bit about that after. And then uh, after the event, which was phenomenal, the Health Optimization Summit. So I spoke on a Saturday. That was a solo talk on a Sunday. It was a talk in collaboration with Dirty, which is a functional mushroom company, fastest growing company, uh, functional mushroom company on the planet right now. And then we went up to Wales and yeah. uh, visited with my family, which again was exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> because we're trying to be present, and we were, and spend as much time with my nieces and nephew. Uh, and then try to get up early, get our workouts done, and try to stay on top of our work mm. because we don't work nine to five. We don't work Monday to Friday. We work seven days a week, and we work all hours because clients need accountability and they need response and they need guidance every single day at any given hour. So I can't like drop that and say, "Hey, I'm taking a few days off." It doesn't happen. And you know, there's a lot of emails, a lot of reviews. Oh, I've got to do overview for Brandon. Just oh, remember, yeah. so yeah. I just thought of something else. I've got to do a voiceover, sorry, for one of the videos for the video trainer as soon as we finish with this. So it's just been go, oh, go, yeah. go, go, go. And then uh, 
spent the majority of our day yesterday um, looking for a t-shirt because Sunshine wanted to dress me for today, which is Hyde Park. Well, we're going to an art exhibition first, and then we're going to Hyde Park this afternoon to watch Guns N' Roses. This will be my sixth time watching Guns N' Roses. This will be my third time watching this lineup, you know, because Axel fired the entire band for some years. So I watched the other lineup a couple of, on a couple of occasions. Yeah, yeah I think uh, you skipped over one big milestone in uh, your life this year. Okay. What happened at the end of March? At the end of March? What happened at the end of March? Didn't you leave quite an important company? Oh yeah, yeah, of course. I left Cage. <laughs> I left Caged, of course I did. Yeah, I remember that, that company that I uh, co-founded. Yes, so I co-founded, obviously, Caged uh, back in the end of 2014, December uh, 2014. Of course, Caged was a magazine that I published, Caged Muscles magazine that I published in 2006, 2007. And that was my body space name. Caged Muscle was all what, what I was all about because I love MMA fighting. Mm. I taught kickboxing for two years. And I did kickboxing for five years, uh, Muay Thai. So I really loved the use of elbows and, and knees uh, because, uh, I don't know, it, it, because I, you grow up fighting a little bit, you're used to using your hands and, and whatnot, but you're never really used to using kicks, chins, knees, stuff like that. And it wasn't out of violence. It was just a, a great sport. And I really enjoyed sparring, you know, because the adrenaline would be pumping and I love adrenaline. And I, I remember... You know, you're supposed to check kicks. And I check kicks, but I remember getting pounded on the leg, but I didn't mind it. Really mm. didn't mind it. But I'd wake up the next day and it would be black. I'm like, wow, I really took some kicks <laughs> yeah. here. But I've got a, quite a good pain threshold, so I really enjoyed that. And um, with Cage, there was just a direction between myself and the two other co-founders that we just couldn't agree upon. And uh, so, you know, there was a lot of sleepless nights there for about a year. Uh, so it was a long time coming, and I thought, you know what? This isn't about the money. This is all about um, authenticity, feeding my purpose, being able to sleep at night in good karma. So I decided, you know what? It, it's time. It's time to walk away and uh, you know move on to other things that make me feel purposeful yeah. and make me feel happy and uh, you know give me drive for something else in the future. Yeah, no, I know it was a hard decision for you. Obviously, I. Well, you no one was closer to it than you. Exactly, exactly. And so I think that um, I'm just happy to to see that you feel better. Yeah, for sure. Like, I don't do well with stress. No. You know that. Yeah. I'm not very good at assimilating it. We all need therapists if they'll stay, stay with us. <laughs> <laughs> Inside Jeff. <job. laughs> yeah, she seems to get rid of all of her therapists. I'm like, you know what? I think you need someone else. I think it's time for us to split ways. I'm like, again? Dang it. So if anyone knows of a good therapist, yeah. I am looking for I'm the, one. I'm the only one that's really in there with you, babe, to come to think of it. So, I know, yeah. Like someone said on my stories yesterday, like uh, if you could go back to, I think they said like 2013 or 2012, mm -hmm. it was weird how they were so specific, you know, what would you tell yourself? Ah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I said, I'd do everything exactly the same. I wouldn't go back and change anything. Oh, you wouldn't? No, 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 because like... Without those experiences, yeah. maybe I wouldn't have met Mew, mm. maybe I wouldn't be going on to my next thing, maybe we wouldn't be here right now. So if you change anything in the past, we've seen Back to the Future, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, <laughs> yeah, like, that ah. is the gospel on how things work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, you know for true, sure, because true. like, you know, maybe if you'd think, if I'd say, oh, I changed that, change that, I wouldn't be where I am now, and I'd be like, fuck, I want to go back yeah. into the past to change so I could go back to where I am right now. Because they're not bad experiences, of course they are at the time, there's a lot of stress. Mm. You you know increase your biological age dramatically, mm -hmm. but then you're like you know what these are just learning. You know and you yeah. only see it in hindsight. It's yeah, never at that time. Uh, these are learning experiences and challenges that we need to overcome, and we grow from it. That's what we hope. Well, I mean, I met you because you came into my work to film for Caged. Yeah, exactly. Right? And so uh, obviously, and then for me, as but I it was wrong, really. Ron, yeah, Ron, Ron was the guy that Torres, of together. course, we give you the kudos all the time. Um, but yeah, filming for Cage, and it was just like through you, I got introduced to supplements, uh, Mr. King of supplements here, you know, and then obviously through Cage, I got exposed to, to the supplements. Um, but what I love is that like, you know, learning all that from you and experiencing all the supplements I had from Cage has really opened me up to trying so many new products. And I think that was kind of the thing, like for me, even though you leaving Cage was hard for me as well, because I was like, oh my God, 
because you're like, I'm saying goodbye to millions of dollars. <laughs> That's why. You're walking away from millions of dollars? Are you crazy? No, no. Because I mean, it's just, you know, I, I hold that, like, there's a deep nostalgic positive nostalgia to to caged for me because it was like my entry into the world of sports performance and then obviously all the people that i met um that work there that have some sort of affiliation through there obviously they're you know they're always the, the athletes, the athletes. i mean they're incredible. great people yeah absolutely great people so it was hard for me and it made me think like oh, what do i do now but honestly the fact is life does move on and there are so many great companies out there doing amazing things, putting out uh, better products than obviously when you first started the brand, because I think when you first started the brand, there weren't that many uh, companies doing what they're doing now. No, no, no. There wasn't many companies doing fermented ingredients. Exactly. Efficacious ingredients, natural flavors, or whatever. You know, yeah. There's just not many people that were actually merging the health sector with the sports performance sector. Yeah. But more and more companies are now, which is great. Hats off. The, I'm very, very lucky to be sat here talking to you, being in this position, you know, going out with you. Um, you know, if I think back to my childhood, because we've obviously just been in Wales, mm. it's a reminder all the time for me, not that there's anything wrong with the area that I come from, uh, not that there's anything wrong with my upbringing or anything like that, but I'm like, God, I'm so glad that I, I, I wanted more mm. and I sought opportunity, but it wasn't for the sake of sacrificing who I am, mm. you know, because a lot of people do that. They go, I'll sell my soul for that shit. Mm. That means I could, you know, we saw that Rolls Royce yesterday. Yeah. I loved the, I love the Rolls Royce oh, color. It's beautiful. I love so it. Beautiful. But would I chase money and sell snake oil in order to drive that car? No, that, that's a different type of value for me. I, you know, a value that you can go to bed, maybe on your deathbed and go, you know what? I have no regrets. Mm. That's, that's, that's the best way to live your life because, look, I'm not a religious person, but who knows if there is an afterlife where we're now paying the debt of yeah. that car, you know, that karmic debt of the life before. I don't know. Mm. So let's play it safe. That's a good point. Can't wait for you guys to use his new video trainer. I really can't wait because I want, you know, so I'm changing gears to talk about that because you talk about karmic debt right now. And, you know, in the new video trainer, Chris is asking everybody to do something different every single week. Um, obviously, the, the training is going to be unique and very diverse, and you are going to be shattered. <laughs> like, absolutely shattered. Like, I can't wait to, for you to see what's in store. mess you up. Yeah, but in a good way. Um, but the things he does, he asks you to do is very, very special. And one of it is to pay it forward. You know, and you talk about that, about, you know, putting, building up your karma, because the thing is like, yeah, whether you're spiritual or not, whether you believe in God or not, like there is this energy, right, that we all feel, uh, the good energy, the bad energy, you know, we talk about like, you know, the vibe you feel with certain people and how like, it's hard to explain, you know, why you might meet somebody and be like, they're really nice, but I gotta get away from them, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it's like a very bizarre feeling, but the same with like karma, it's like, we don't know when we may need it. We don't know when it's going to come into play for us. And we don't know how just the little bit of extra help we can give to somebody else may be the tipping point for them and having a great day, having a terrible day, whatever. You know, and uh, I really appreciate that in the video series because it reminded me about how much more I need to be doing. You know, because it's so easy for us to just get like trapped in this bubble of like, Got to get my hair done, got to do my makeup, got to have my outfit, got to be have my meals ready, got to go to the gym. You know, just think about yourself and all you have to do. And maybe you have a family, you have to think about your kids and like, do they have their shoes on? And, you know, stuff like that that we don't think about. <laughs> yeah, until we get to the pool and then realize, shit, we need to buy a lot of stuff. You know, kids now. Wait, We've you, got everything. you're five and you didn't bring your shoes and you didn't bring towel? your towel and you didn't bring your swimsuit. What are you thinking? <laughs> You know, but it's, you know, stuff like that. It's like, you, you know, think about that part of things. Or you do think about that. Though. You have a lot of thoughts in your mind that are you thinking about somebody you don't even know? Probably not. You're too busy focusing on yourself and your family, you know, to think about other people. And I think that's an important pause, uh, you know, to be like, you know, we do need to think about other people more often, even if it's just a little bit. Um, because we're all part of this, like, human psyche or part of this human collective. collective yeah and no matter what what you know where we fit on the tax bracket like we're really still people at the end of the day who, who need each other so 
not really sure I was going with that, but definitely, definitely get the video trainer when it comes out. <laughs> well, I think what it is is because we all think about, okay, what's the best pre-workout and yeah. how can I get myself psyched up and did I hit my PBs? It's not all about that. Mm. It's all about finding that balance because, you know, as I always tell people, your performance is dictated on your recovery. If your dopamine fixed and you're always, or adrenaline or norepinephrine fixed all the time, you're going to burn out. Mm. And you have to slow down and release that melatonin, the oxytocin, the serotonin to think about what's after the, the tunnel vision. You have this peripheral, vi mm -hmm. this peripheral vision that we very rarely see because yeah. we're always searching forward. Once we've reached one milestone, we move on to the next. But there's this old, whole world out there, I can't remember how Bruce Lee put it, that's, that we have this entire beauty that's mm. around us that we never notice. Yeah. But it's only when we slow down that we notice these things. It's like when we were walking the other day uh, to the gym. I was like, you said there's Nando's here. And I'm like, where, where? And it was right in front of right, me. Right, I couldn't right. see it because I'm always focused, so focused on the next thing. Instead of slowing things down, and then that you're able to go, okay, well, maybe I should think of comic debt and pay it forward mm. and get that person mm. behind in the coffee line a cuppa. Exactly. Know, as long as they're not purchasing it for the entire corporate <laughs> team. I know. <laughs> yeah. We went to do that at Starbucks and we're like, God, I hope they're not ordering from the office. <laughs> But they were bloody slow. Yeah, they yeah, were. We ended up being late to our next appointment, but at least they got their coffee. Yeah, so much for that. But yeah, no, that's that's a really good reminder because, like, you know, well, everything that we're doing in life, you know, comes down to how do we feel at the end of the day? You know, do we really feel good about ourselves? Like, whether it's in our career or our relationship, even just like how we think about ourselves, you know, like that's a really big part of it too. Like, we don't realize how much negativity we might like direct towards ourselves unintentionally uh, because of how we've been raised or how we've been made to believe we need to look like or think like or be like. Um, so I think that's a really important part. But I know that one of the things that um, you told me that I've always remembered is when you did that silent retreat was that the guru was it the guru was that saying like, you know, you need to, you need to live your life in service of others. Mm. You know, and I think that's one of the things that you've done really well. Um, because everything that you've done in the fitness industry has been in the fit service of others. Like, you're, you know, how many people, you know, can raise their hands and be like, Chris Gethin has fucking helped me, you know? That's who gave me t-shirts yesterday. Oh, no, no, it took me to the changing room. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> who you begrudgingly went to the changing rooms. Yeah. <laughs> we, I was like, God, I was on a mission of finding some new clothes, and he was just like, I don't want to try these on. Um, funny. Um, but anyway, yeah, ton you meet them in the most random of places. Somebody that comes up to you and says, Chris Gethin, you changed my life. And I love seeing that. And I love hearing that. And I think that's something that you really should be proud of. You know, but the work is not done, right? As much as maybe you feel like you want a break, right? You need a break or something like that. There's still a lot of biceps to be built and a lot of <laughs> abs to be shredded. There's still a lot of work to be done. But, you know, one of the things that you're focusing right now on more than ever is not just bodybuilding, it's biohacking. And I know that you just recently had a podcast with uh, Tim Gray where he talked about like his top five biohacks. But what would yours be if you could spout them out really quick? Like, what would be your number one biohack? See, it all depends whether I'm in a a place like like London or Mumbai or if it's in Boise. It changes. Okay, so let's just say right now where you're at, London. Uh, grounding is very important. Grounding and getting a little bit of sunlight. You know, I don't have my red light with me uh, at the moment, but that's why, you know, when we sat for breakfast this morning, I really want to be by the window. Oh, I want to get sunlight to right. kind of wake me up and put me in this time zone and make me feel better. And then obviously earthing, I've got the Barky trainers I wore them this morning uh, because I want to earth myself as much mm. as possible. Because when we're in a built up place, you know, by my bedside, I've got my Vivo base, which is a EMF scrambler. I'm just, I'm just bombarded with non-native EMFs and Wi-Fi and it's just bad and it affects my sleep really really bad so earthing is very very important for me when I'm in a built-up city mm. but when I'm home it's the cold thermogenesis is most important I'm cold showering here and it is a bloody cold shower which I <laughs> love I'm like oh, um, but uh, you know at home it's the ice baths because it just helps me so much with my mental stability my mental stability is my priority mm -hmm. when I'm at home uh, but when I'm, you know, in a, a built-up area, it's grounding myself is right. my priority because of the just 
being bombarded, which are not bombarded as much in, in Boise. Yeah, that's that's really cool. And I, I, I really believe in the power of grounding. I mean, you, you can all feel it when you walk through a forest, you walk on a beach, you go out in nature, and you have this feeling of like connectedness and grounding, really. And, uh, you know, I was on a call with a, a potential client of yours. Um, by the way, you guys, like we are taking uh, discovery calls if anyone, if anyone is interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching with Chris. You may possibly reach me or two other members of our team, and we'd have a chat to see if you'd be a good fit to work one-on-one -on -one with Chris. So, um, but anyway, I was chatting with one of these uh, individuals who was looking to train with you, and he said he really wanted to train with you because he's been using some of your biohacking practices or things that you say for people to do, not only on himself, but on his daughter. Mm. And his daughter has autism, she's on the spectrum, and I am no way a doctor or claiming any of this is medical advice, so please be aware of that. But he told me from his firsthand experience with having a daughter that's on the spectrum is that grounding helps her tremendously. Yeah. Oh, you think about it, you get these negative eons yeah. that are anti-inflammatory. We're just being bombarded with inflammation at the moment. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, like I'm not speaking on behalf of all doctors and physicians, but a lot of them have not experienced or been educated in these advancements that's happening at the moment. Like we did what was called yesterday the human regenerator mm, yeah. this is a hundred and fifty thousand dollar machine that not everyone's going to have in their home but we went in there yesterday to really fire up our mitochondria so you think of earthing you think of sunlight you think of pemf and you have thirty thousand volts surrounding you at the same time when you're in this machine and I felt the same last time I did this, where I feel like I woke up with a bit of a hangover, but then as I start going, I feel great, and I feel good Do again. Do you feel good? Yeah, I feel good now. But I felt like I woke up with a hangover uh, this yeah, morning. Yeah. I was like groggy, yeah. let me take some methylene blue, you know, just to fire up the mitochondria again, but I feel great. And, and like I said, a lot of the doctors just aren't aware of these things, mm. but you have to have an open mind to try a lot of these things, like that human regenerator that we went in yesterday, people with autism have been in there, yeah. people that have cold sores and, and warts that have had them for years, no longer have them after, say, five mm. sessions. And we heard the story of Dom uh, yesterday, whose father is suffering from not Alzheimer's. 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 Alzheimer's, yeah. Didn't, couldn't tell his wife his, her name, didn't know who she was. And then next thing, he's, was he cooking, putting out the rubbish, playing games with her. Making her tea. Making her as tea. As she likes it. Yeah, as she likes it. And, you know, calling up Dom and saying, oh my God, it feels like my husband's back. You yeah. know, you just, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, I'm getting goosebumps just Aww. repeating that uh, now, you know. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunities out there. I'm not saying there's a cure for everybody, but yeah. in the biohacking spectrum, it is combining our ancestral wisdom with today's advancement in technology, but then you can obviously use that and what the doctors do suggest as well, and just combine it all together and try to heal yourself. You know, we're all trying to reverse our biological age. We're all trying to increase our health span, or at least most of us are. And, uh, you know, if we can do that by speaking to other people within the biohacking industry, mm. attending these summits like this, we're going to be on the cutting edge of those advancements. You know, there's this person now, Brian Johnson, that you've probably heard about, not the liver king, who has already spent over $2 million on, well, even more actually, on his own biohacking journey right now. A lot of people are asking me about him all the time. What do you think about this? I'm like, I think this is amazing because the more money that he is spending on himself and using himself as a guinea pig and making calculated decisions, the more we can learn from that. Yeah, yeah, got it. What would you say is number two biohack? Uh, uh, number two uh, biohack for me is blocking blue light. Okay. You know, depending, like when we went into the gym this yes. morning, I was like, God, I wish I had the glasses. Uh, and when we were in the biohacking summit, there was a couple of occasions that I didn't have the glasses, and I'm like, oh, God, I really wish I had them now. It just, it gives me a lot of eye strain, uh, it gives me headaches, um, and obviously it, it prevents me from releasing melatonin. My brain is usually racing, not all the time, but if I feel that it's racing in the evening, I have to have the blue light block and uh, glasses on. And unfortunately, I've mentioned this before, over 98% of the uh, blue light blocking glasses on the market don't work. Mm. They're not scientifically backed with research or studies or R&D. So you have to be very careful of what you wear because so many people go, oh, I tried them, that didn't work. Yeah, that's like taking a supplement and that yeah. didn't work or trying CBD that didn't work. Because it's the bloody wild, wild west out there. Yeah. So you have to really do your research to see what works and what doesn't. But that, that, that is me. Because we want the restorative spectrum. 
of the light, of the red and the blue, as long as it's natural. We need to have slightly uh, raised cortisol levels during the day, but not to the extent that you don't have the restorative greens, the ambers, the reds as well. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, the, you know, obviously there are some good companies out there making quality, quality blue light blocking glasses, but we'll link in the show notes below the company that we're supporting. Raw Optics, you can definitely. just say it, Raw Optics. <laughs> exactly, Raw Optics, we'll link up below. Um, so that's okay, that's number two. So we have grounding for number one, blue light blocking glasses for number two. What's number three? I like the human recharge. Okay, yeah. you're putting that in there, yeah, I'm got putting, it. I'm putting okay. that in there as well, because this is like, you know, it is firing up your mitochondria. So as we, you know, like Dom shared yesterday, if you think about it, we are just being bombarded and penetrated with phthalates, with non-native EMFs, with pollutants, both in our water and in the air supply. It's just, we're being bombarded with artificial light so much. And if our mitochondria health is then very, very low, it's not gonna fight off or allow us to recover from possibly in immune invasion. We're gonna be low on energy if we're trying to digest uh, um, like glyphosate or antibiotics or anything like that that is in our food supply. So we're going to be low in energy, not yeah. just physically, but mentally. We're not going to be living our best life. We're not going to be optimizing our health. But that is a way to optimize and refire your mitochondria. Obviously, it's not going to work by itself. You have to live your life yeah. like you're trying to optimize your health. But that just gives you a good fire. And we're going to do that again tomorrow because we're going to be pretty exhausted after today's event, <laughs> after Guns N' Roses. Because, you know, we're, we're going to have some balance. We're going to have some yeah. drinks today. Yeah. We're going to have some fun. We're not going to measure our food. No, but know? we do have we do have, yeah. we do have our food. we got some prep kitchen. And we're not affiliated by this company by any means. But they gave us, uh, or we ordered some meals from them while we're here in the UK. So we'll be on top of things like that. But are we going to have a drink or two? Sure, you know. This is our one time in a year that we'll have some fun. <laughs> exactly, and we're gonna buy back that drink as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, of course. So you know, I should we tell them how we're gonna buy a hack a couple of drinks? Why not? Okay, so dihydromyositin is something that helps break down and bind a lot of the uh, aldehyde and the ethanol and the alcohol, along with some activated charcoal. I don't suggest activated charcoal too often because it does bind a lot of the essential minerals that you need in your body. So I'll only do that on occasion. Um, and then we'll have uh, dihydroberberine, which will help mitigate some of the blood sugar spike and damage from that. Uh, and we'll also take in some high-level antioxidants, such as the Biostack Labs, glutathione. Uh, what else? I have not other antioxidants. We, my, my Vital C. My Vital C as well, the Carbon C16, yeah. Nobel-winning uh, carbon. And then there is one more, hydrogen. Ah. So we just had some hydrogen-rich water. Yep. So again, a non-hormetic antioxidant. So we're, we're doing whatever we can to mitigate some of the damage. And then tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon, we're going to have an IV. We've got IVs set up. I've got to check my message as well, see when that is uh, for. And then we're going to follow that with another session on the human recharge as well. And then I may even put a glutathione suppository up my bum before I get my flight on. <laughs> oh, God, I thought you were going to put it up on mine. Monday, on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> that scared me for a moment. Oh, uh, no. No, I don't want to think of that. I mean, anyway. <laughs> Spread your legs, baby. It's coming. Torpedo. Yeah, I don't know if that's like a couple's thing. It's not like a partner thing. Like, let me put the suppository in, honey. <laughs> We're yeah, not just there don't yet. make eye contact. We're not there yet. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so all those supplements that you just said, you would take them before? Uh, during as well. So okay. I've got some... Um, uh, bitters, uh, bitters number nine. Is it Doctor Shades? Dr. Yeah, Doctor Shades. Shades. Yeah. Chris, Chris Shades. Shout out to Chris Shade. Didn't get to talk to you at the health optimization summit. It's too busy. Way too busy. Yeah. Um, so uh, we'll have that before a beverage as well. Every single time. Every single time. Every one single pump. time. One, one pump. pump. One pump. All right. So every we're... single time. It's like <laughs> how many we have it? All eighteen times. We'll try. Here we go. <laughs> um, yeah, eighteen times. All right. So that's the digression to. What you what how we're gonna biohack our drinks, but what would be the fourth biohack for you? Fourth biohack. Okay, good question. Uh, let me see. Stem cells. Oh, okay. Stem cells, I could combine BPC one five seven in this as well. Okay. Because like uh that for me is essential because like this would be very different obviously to Tim's yeah, yeah. top biohacks because he hasn't really had injuries. You don't have to have injuries to have stem cells because it does help your body regenerate itself. 
um, you know, our stem cells, our bank of stem cells decline rapidly, dependent on how we've lived our life, but age is a, a factor. If you've had a lot of injuries, your body then pulls on yeah. that bank of stem cells. I've had more injuries than any of my clients. When I talk to my clients, I'm like, oh, a lot more. Um, and then how you've lived your life. If you've gone through drug abuse, alcohol abuse, or anything like that. If you've eaten bad, a lot of uh, pro-inflammatory foods, sugars, uh, highly refined vegetable oils, stuff like that, then you're going to be pulling on that stem cell bank. So I've had stem cells on a couple of occasions now. Going to go again maybe in December. So that's that's uh, the top biohack in there. And I could throw BPC-157. So that's a sequence of amino acids. Uh, peptide. A peptide, yeah, that help with restoration, such as tendon, ligament, yeah. muscle damage, or anything like that. If you've got any strains, injuries, uh, BPC-157 has really, really helped me. There's other uh, peptides like TB500 that is supposed to be really good for restoration as well. That's never really done anything for me. So uh, sometimes in combo, those are supposed to re really work. Hasn't done anything for mm. me, so I just don't buy that peptide. Yeah. And what is the last, the number five biohack? Number five biohack. Let me see. I've written them down. Can I look at my phone? Fine. I was going to say, no, you got to think of it, but I'm like, it might be a while. <laughs> yeah, I can't really remember. So let me get my notes. I just wrote it down the other day. Uh, God, it is easy. Ah, yeah, okay. Well, I guess it's kind of similar. But it's basically, see this case? Oh, see yeah. my bum bag? See this blanket? Yeah, yeah. It's all EMF mitigating. So obviously I, I fly a lot. So I have to mitigate a lot of the damage of the EMF. So I've got the Vivo base over there. I'm not going to show you that. Uh, but this case is a defender shield case. So it does, if I, I do have an EMF reader, so if I have my EMF reader and go over my phone, it goes up, obviously. If I have it in this case, it's very minimal. If I have it in this bum bag, which is a defender shield as well, it's even less. And then when I'm on the plane, or if I'm in my hotel room, in Mumbai specifically, I'll have this little Faraday blanket on me. I have my Faraday boxer shorts on as well. I have the Faraday cap, so blocking a lot of the artificial uh, or non-native EMF is mm -hmm. right up there as well. Because I am, I feel I am electrosensitive. Yeah, yeah, you definitely are. Yeah. Way more than I am. And I mean, we went to, I think you first noticed it when we went to ADC yeah, yeah. in Vegas, which is, anyway, another story. But coming back from ADC, uh, it was just like a weird hangover. For like three days. Yeah. It's so weird. And a couple of other people within our group said the same thing, but other people not. Yeah. You know, it doesn't affect everybody, yeah. but I feel some people are more electrosensitive than others. And I can quantify this. If I look at my mm -hmm. HRV, my HRV tanks, if uh, I'm getting penetrated all the time, like we'll be in Hyde Park with thousands of other people today, and uh, I can only expect to feel some of those effects. So again, tomorrow I will be, and I, this isn't a shameless plug, I'll be wearing my Bahi earthing trainers. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna walk around London barefoot, but this will be the next best thing because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. these are grounding trainers. They're comfortable. I can run in them. I wear them all the time. So. Yeah, I need to get myself a pair of those. I thought you got some of them. No, I forgot to stuff. stop by. Oh, yeah. good, good, good. I know. I know. Well, tell me what you want and I'll contact them. I appreciate it. There's a code apparently. I'll be carrying around my Palo Santo. Yeah. <laughs> that's, my, that's my biohack for being around a lot of people. It's like cleanse my energy <laughs> with Palo Santo. But okay, so we've kind of gone down a long little journey from like the start of 2023 uh, ending up here with a nice little titty shake you can't see it if you're listening to this on audio but if you're on youtube or anywhere else enjoy <laughs> a moment a moment for that um but here we are now and i know that we're getting ready to kind of part ways for a little bit you're going to be heading to india two months for two months i'm going to be heading somewhere else and then uh we're going to hopefully see each other in boise that's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's the plan but um what are you what is on your mind now like you've done you know you've done the video trainer you've done the guest posing you've shifted gears career-wise you know uh, leaving caged you're now entering into more of a biohacking space like what's kind of on your mind like what are you thinking about so far today uh, just trying to be present with you because we are going to be parting ways very soon. So I just want to make sure that, you know, I just remember this time with good positive energy, mm -hmm. have laughs, have fun. And then further from that, just uh, 
get in this client transformed in India. Like, I, I don't think people understand the stress that I put myself on or put myself under, I should say, trying to get someone in shape, mm. especially when they're coming from a place of major deficit. Mm. Major deficit. There's a lot of muscle we're going to put on this client, a lot of fat then we have to lose, but just got to focus on putting on muscle. Muscle is much of a long term play as opposed to fat loss. Fat loss, I can get it off pretty quick 12 weeks. That's all I need. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to muscle building, that's a lot longer mm. of a play and it requires just so much pain and discipline. And it comes down to how much pain that client can take. Uh -huh. That's healthy. Yeah. You know, that's not in injury prone. Uh, but what they can take. So that's what's just on my mind at the moment. You know, further from that, you know, we're going to be at the Arnold Classic next year, and there's something that's uh, I think big that's going to happen there. So I need to focus on that as well. Got to be in pretty good shape. And you, if you're going to bloody represent me, girl, you're going to have to buck up too. So uh, that's the next thing that's on my mind. Get India out of the way, and then obviously have stem cells. Going to be speaking at Biohacking Summit in Amsterdam. Uh, we're going to be going to Mexico in November. Oh, yeah. A little lot. Oh yeah, we're trying to figure out when we're gonna get married. Like have oh, yeah, our, have that's our marriage thing. celebration. Yeah. I'm gonna leave By that the way, you. everyone. I'm gonna leave that to you. <laughs> yeah, we thought it's about time we have a celebration. Yeah, but you're not all invited. Well, maybe, yeah, yeah, if it's up to it, maybe some of them. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna live stream this entire <laughs> event. <laughs> no, we're not gonna do that. But yeah, I mean, besides that, and also just like trying to uh, find time to do nothing. I think, you know, yesterday I had to put in our calendar, like just a day where we did absolutely nothing planned. You know, we did a lot of stuff actually. It's not like we didn't do anything, mm. but it's like, don't, don't make any plans with anybody. Don't make any plans with anything. Just like have like a free flow day because it's so easy to get kind of trapped in this kind of like, got to do this, got to do that. Cause there's so many things to do. There's so many people to talk to. There's so many coffees to be had, etc. that at the end of the day, it's like, do you mind if you carry on talking while I have a pee? <laughs> I got to pee. I'm like, you're gonna wrap this thing up. I got to piss. I was gonna wrap it up actually. Well, you carry on, baby. I will wrap this no, up. No, no. I want you to tell them what your experience was like getting ready for the show. Oh, he just said if you didn't hear that while he was in the toilet, what was my experience like getting ready for the show for this bodybuilding show? Well, if you, you do, if you are curious, if you do care to know, it was a very, very interesting, very interesting experience. Um, I decided to do it 12 weeks prior to the show. It was like, Chris was like, yeah, you should do the show. And I was like, hell no. I've never been one to do a bodybuilding show and I didn't care to do one. Um, but I've always wanted to be in great shape and that's always been my goal. Um, but when he kind of said that, I was like, you know, if I were to ever do one, it would be in this exact moment. And so I called up Neil and I said, what do you think? He was like, you're freaking crazy. But if you want to do it, I'll help you. And so I was like, all right. And I took a night to think about it. And then I woke up the you know day after. I was like, I'm in. Let's do it. And I think, you know, one of the things I learned was that when you're preparing for something like a bodybuilding show where you're basically showing your body, right? It is a bodybuilding show. Um, there's a, definitely a lot of pressure involved in that and a lot of uh, <laughs> stress because you don't want to embarrass yourself. You don't want to be on stage and to have people judge you because they are judging you like that's the point you're there to be judged next to other people and how your bodies look which is just really insane um but they will judge you and they will make a decision based on whether you're in shape or not right or whether you should be on that stage and there were mistakes i made rookie mistakes through this entire process with like for example trading out certain fats for other fats or maybe not being as careful with uh, spillage in regards to like how many carbs I was having or how many fats I was having thinking that it would just kind of even itself out because I was doing a lot of cardio which is not the case um, and I mean at the end of the day oh, show day came and I could have been 10 I should have been to be more competitive 10 pounds lighter and you know make sure to tell me that the night before you fucking <laughs> <laughs> asshole <laughs> Uh, you know, and he made sure to tell me that the night before, which I don't know why, what was the point? But um, the point being that like, you know, you could, you will always think you could be more ready. So it's like, if you are going to be doing a show, my lesson would be give yourself a little more time to make mistakes because like, I think I would have needed, I could have used another four weeks or even eight weeks. Really. Six, six weeks. Yeah, I think. yeah. So I think this, this is where a lot of people who've never been in a show, mm -hmm. and I can't think. I can't say that from my experience because I did the absolute opposite uh, in my first show. 
if you look at a lot of athletes and you go, wow, they are built, they have got so much separation, they're freaky, a lot of it is because they've just got shredded. That's mm. all it is. You know, you make it think that person's got an amazing structure, amazing shape. It's just because they got shredded. Yeah, yeah. You know, so if I imagined you with 10 pounds less, your delts would be capped. Your mm. triceps would be so separated from your uh, biceps. Right. Right? Just being relaxed. Right. Just right. being relaxed. Yeah. And people don't understand that. They, you know, they obviously, if you haven't been ripped before, yeah. it's very difficult <laughs> to get past a certain. I guess number or percentage. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it, it's like a barrier that you have to keep smashing and yeah. smashing, and eventually you get through it. And like in my first show that I competed in, I, this happened in every show actually. But I'd look at people, think, what am I doing here? Mm. What am I doing here? But then you get on stage because I was one of the smallest in the beginning. I was shredded, yeah, absolutely shredded, and I beat everybody that I was worrying about. Uh -huh. Because they were bigger, yeah. but they hadn't taken themselves down. I was probably 10, 15 pounds lighter yeah. than a lot of these uh, uh, competitors. And, uh, you know, the ones that you worry about, I've always said this, the ones that you worry about backstage are the ones that look like they're in a concentration camp in their face. Oh, God. You know, it's like, fuck, they're dialed in, they're sucked in. Uh -huh. But you wear not see them in clothes, it's like, they look like nothing, they're skinny. Uh, you have to worry about yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Those are the ones that you have to worry about. But if you, if you, if you really dial it in, I think you'd be surprised by what shape that you're really carrying, you know, a nice V taper, obviously six pack, just being relaxed, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. The, 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 the crazy thing is, is, like, I wasn't, like, overweight. Oh, I no. was at 11.3%. Yeah, yeah, yeah you look great. You, you look know, great. so it was like, that is quite low. It, but, like, a, it, but it wasn't low enough. It's a difference uh, yeah. between top five and top two. You know? Totally, yeah. And so I placed top five, uh, which, which is very good. whatever. Still I'm not, like, happy about it. It's it's whatever to me because like that was the other thing I learned about myself I, is like I, I did this show being like oh let's do it for fun and then I get to like two weeks out and I'm like damn it I really want to win but because I'm really competitive but now I'm not really in the position to win because I was just kind of doing this for fun you know and so now I'm like okay if I ever do it again I'm definitely doing it to be like number one um so that would be that and then I think you know understanding that like for me I really needed to get down to like 9% body fat. You know, I think that would have been the level mm. where, you know, I'm seeing all those separations, just standing relaxed versus having to really like clench up or something like that. So overall great experience. I'm really happy I did it. I made myself proud. I think, you know, I look at my progress and I did do something that I've never done before. And so I was really happy about that. But anyway, always a lesson to be learned. And uh, with that, we're going to say adieu because it is, dinner time. Time to eat. Thank you, Marvin. <laughs> so hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, we really would appreciate your review, whether you're listening on Spotify, iTunes, etc. Please let us know what you're thinking about the show. Um, love your direct feedback. If you have any requests for guests, if you have any requests for topics, um, anything like that, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, for sure. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to yes. the Instagram yep. as well, We've got an Instagram. So we have an Instagram subscription. So there you can actually submit questions as well, either for myself or for guests on this podcast as well. Just to be clear, it's his Instagram, the Chris Gethin Instagram, not the Chris Gethin podcast that has yeah. a subscription. Chris Gethin. Chris but Gethin. please do go follow the Chris Gethin podcast Instagram. And we have a Facebook as well, and it depends on when you're listening to this. We may have a TikTok. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. And uh, and this can be possible without our sponsors as well. Oh, it's yeah. It's basically like we don't do this to make money. We just have the lights kept on because mm. we have to pay our agency yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. So without the sponsors, it wouldn't be possible. So thank you ever so much. Yeah. Please do go and support the sponsors of this uh, podcast as well. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you. And it's time for our chicken. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, everybody. Until next time, we are out. Yeah.